Next to Idaho, Texas is likely the, uh, the reddest state in the union. Yet it still has a lot of big cities, and when you have big cities, you have a lot of people who think somebody owes them a living, and of course that means you've got a lot of Democrats who are going to take advantage of that. So Austin, Texas, in the middle of Texas, is a little Marxist oasis. That's where the University of Texas is located. And then you've got places like Houston, which big old sprawling city, and as we know, they nearly ended up passing that bathroom bill there it got uh, it got defeated, surprised all of the liberals in control because they discovered that a lot of people there are still Christian and they don't want men going into the ladies' rooms, which a bill like that would allow. Yeah, but but see, I'm not really a man. Oh, I know I've got a hairy chest, and I know that I've got, you know, <clears throat> but, but, but I feel like a woman. So I'm going to go in that bathroom. I just saw a couple of women go in there right now, and I'm going to go in there and share it with them. You don't mind if I lock the door, do you? 943, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. 38. This is a story from the Houston Chronicle, another large liberal newspaper. A federal discrimination complaint has been filed on behalf of a Katy area educator who says she was wrongly terminated for refusing to address a six year old girl as a boy. The teacher's lawyer said Tuesday. <laughs> Where? Oh, where did we go wrong? When did we when did we decide that we had to enshrine mass insanity so we didn't hurt anyone's feelings? Where is where is the end of this? Because everybody out there who's a kook, and likely it's the six year old's parents who are the kooks in this situation. How could a parent even do this to their child? The parents have to be just sick and twisted in order to get this started. But because we don't want to say that, because it might make them sad, we go ahead and say, yeah, all right, you can convince your little girl that uh, she's a little boy, and, you know, we wouldn't want to to make you cry, and, you know, because you might sue us, and then we'd have to give you a lot of money because we made you cry. Well, there are a lot of insane people out there. Charlie Manson is bats. Do we suddenly say, you know, Charlie, it's okay, you hacked open all of those people and pulled their babies out of their bellies, and you know, stab them and spread their blood all over the walls because, gosh, we wouldn't want to hurt your feelings either. Madeline Kirksey of Houston, who worked at the Children's Lighthouse Learning Center location on Clay Road, was fired November 3rd after she would not agree to treat the child as a male and call the child by a new male name, according to a copy of the filing with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. In other words, she's got the child's best interests at heart, unlike the parents. Reached by phone Tuesday... Jamie Isaacs, a spokesman for Children's Lighthouse Learning Center, said Kirksey was not fired because of the matter relating to the transgender student. He said he could not comment on matters related to employment. Now, here's the thing. The woman has worked there for a long, long time. She's a teacher in her 40s. So all of us, when they say she was fired for another matter, yeah, uh, because you know what? She also happens to be a person of color. She's, She's a black woman. She's in her 40s. So they're worried that she might come along and say, hey, you know what? I got fired because. But she's not saying she was fired because she was a minority or a woman. She is saying she was fired because when, when little Julie walked into the classroom, she didn't call him uh, Butch or Joe or, or Mitch or whatever it would be. And for that reason, she's lost her job. And the liberal attack on traditional America just continues. 946, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We were talking yesterday about the fire chief in Atlanta. He is uh, suing, of course, that city to try to get his job back. He was fired after he wrote a book. I mean, he's a a devout Christian, heavily involved in his church, wrote a book about traditional marriage, and also he cited scripture and talked about the biblical interpretation of relationships between men and women versus relationships of same-sex variety, and he got fired. And the, 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 the new rationale, which was invented somewhere along the line by the city of Atlanta, is, well, he got fired because he wrote a book without permission. Why do you need someone's permission to write a book? Just because you work somewhere, when you're off hours and you're walking down the street, do you need to have papers with you so that we can check and see that you actually live in the neighborhood? Do you need permission to go into the store to pick up a gallon of milk? If you decide to go to church, do you need your employer's permission to do that? 
What if he decided to write songs? And I thought the line was just a killer line in the Wall Street Journal about this yesterday. He would have never been fired if he had written a cookbook without permission. No, he was fired because some liberal out there wants to stamp out Christianity because it makes Johnny and Jimmy sad. 947, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. A couple of minutes away from Mike Gallagher. Telephone number if you'd like to reach the show today, 736 0300. That's 736 0300. We want to mention as well, Gallagher is brought to you exclusively by the financial advisors at Waddell and Reed in Twin Falls, 736 6563. That's 736 6563. There's an interesting thing about these up, these these blow-ups on these college campuses lately. The political correctness, and then the liberals in charge of academia have realized how they've let things get out of hand. It took a long time for them to reach that conclusion. But the political correctness that is really driving all of this. One of our callers earlier said, what do you got against uh, this notion that these are uh, incubators of democracy? Well, tell you what, these are incubators of of a civil war between traditional America and whack job America. And perhaps what's happening on those campuses will start spreading elsewhere into other institutions in this country and into the streets of this country. And I'll tell you what, caller earlier mentioned the fact that we have a situation in this country where if the grid went down, it could be quite dangerous because a lot of people out there have firearms. There's only 350 million firearms in this country. The thing is, Most of those are owned by people of traditional values. Yeah, you know, like Christian Americans. And over there on the left, I mean, all of these guys who are running around in the inner city shooting six-year-olds to death, they don't know how to point a name. That's why in in these drive-by shootings and these gang wars, little children get killed. It's because the guy, you know, Daquan and Escoban, or whatever their names are, they don't know how to point fire a gun. They've got no chance if that comes along. I'm not recommending anything like that. I'm just telling you, if if it hits the fan, they are going to quickly realize that it's pretty much God-fearing traditional Americans who are going to come out on top of this thing. And maybe, if I'm a lefty, I should start thinking about behavioral modification as a skill, a survival skill. As I mentioned earlier, Mike Gallagher is on the way, and then we'll have a wrap-up coming along in just a moment. Bill Colley with you on Top Story today. At 9.50 on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Hey, you can celebrate. We're up to 40. How does Lorena Bobbitt differ from, uh, in any way from the late, great Paul Harvey, who used to do this segment on the air? Uh, Paul Harvey used to say when it came to crimes like rape that a simple punishment was the removal of the offending organ. And I think about that because someone just posted something at Facebook that caught my attention. This is from Breitbart, England. This is the headline. Little white slag. That's what the Muslim men who mass raped a 13 year old English girl called her. Do you think that there are people in England right now, parents, who would take up Paul Harvey's old idea and remove the offensive organs in this situation? Um, bad, bad news. You want to talk about racism. The people behind that, it's not just the, the chauvinism of their own religious faith which, of course, is incompatible, completely incompatible with Western values and ideas, if, indeed, they are practicing it as they are instructed in their holy book. It's 9.55. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and news coming to a country near you. Newsradio1310.com online means you can hear us anywhere all over the world. Telephone number if you'd like to reach our program, 736-0300-736-0300. If I happen to be a father, and I am, my daughter's a grown-up and she's, well, she's a pretty rugged girl. She can pretty well take care of herself, most mostly. But I don't care. If something like that happened to my daughter, I might be inclined to take matters into my own hands. And things would get really, really nasty fast for a lot of these men. I want to mention Rush Limbaugh is coming up following the program. He's going to be up following 10 o'clock news from Fox. Sean Hannity this afternoon, as well as coming up, I think, in just uh, 4 o'clock news. After 4 o'clock news, it's Glenn Beck. I had to strain for that one for a moment. One last quick thing i got to share with you today. came across this. Growing up as a kid, I think a lot of us identified with a TV character 
and comic strip character Charlie Brown. Sad, sad story here. You know, Charlie, when he went out trick-or-treating, ended up getting rocks instead of candy. Now it appears Charlie Brown is going to be chopping rocks. This is from Fox News. Good grief. I'm in sad shape. Former child actor Peter Robbins, the voice of Charlie Brown in the 1960s cartoon classics, including a Charlie Brown Christmas, pleading guilty to trying to hire someone to kill the San Diego County Sheriff and threatening to harm the manager of a mobile home park where he used to live. Charges he threatened a judge and vandalized his jail cell dismissed as part of the plea deal. The 59-year-old says he's bipolar and schizophrenic and prosecutors acknowledged he was better behaved in the courtroom this time now that he's on medication. Robbins could get nearly five years in prison when he's sentenced on the felony counts December 7th. Jane Metzler, Fox News. Now when he goes to prison and he gets the instructions from the prison guards, what are they going to sound like? Yeah, it'll be a little bit like that. But Charlie will understand. Some people just have a difficult time keeping their lives in order. I guess it's all of the celebrity. Even though no one recognized him when he opened his mouth, they went, oh, you're that little roundhead kid. Whatever happened to the little redheaded girl? And that really sent him over the edge. <laughs> God willing, if the creek don't rise, I get to do this all over again tomorrow morning between 8 and 10 o'clock, if they'll have me. And please have a great day. If you'd like to, you know, have a thought after the program, you can always email me, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. We have an author joining us uh, late tomorrow in the program. Uh, she has written a book about uh, winter sports and some of the great sites here in the winter in Idaho. She's doing a book signing this weekend at Barnes & Noble right here in Twin Falls. But we're going to get her on the air tomorrow to talk a little bit about the book and really how you go about publishing one. A lot of people out there probably think they could do it, uh, they just don't know how to do it. Hope you have a great day.